Hi everyone, um, this is my response to Natalia's one of my five tarot master books. Um, I shared videos yesterday um, of books that helped me when I first started my journey and that was just learning the basics of the of tarot and um, how a couple of those books I had I used to incorporate in my practice as a witch in spell work and so forth so um, but in direct response to her video I feel um, five tarot master books really means um, going a bit deeper now um, whether it, I, I look at it more philosophical but also I think of books that help you develop your personal growth while using tarot it's not about magic it's not about um, using it intuitively to predict the future it it's a different approach to tarot it's um it's how you can assist your your character development your per like i said personal growth and it includes the art more uh in-depth look into the archetypes um of tarot um really hand in hand with um jung's work as well when you start, I think, to go deeper um, into tarot. And um, very theological, some of the books that I have are very theological as far as um, going into um, even high magic or Crowley's Thoth Tarot. I believe I have a couple on here that are, are in relation to that deck in, in Crowley's work in the Golden Dawn because it is very, very deep um, kind of esoteric studies um, that I do incorporate magic, but also, um, a just deeper, <laughs> deeper look into, um, the practices of Crowley and, and the development of his tarot and, and, um, so yeah, that's like, and that's not going to be for everybody. I understand that. So, but I feel my overall general personal growth, the number one master book has to be Ben of Owen's Holistic Tarot. And I mean, it's right there on the cover of the book, an in integrative approach to using tarot for personal growth. Um, I think this book is a masterpiece. I think if you don't have this book, um, you should at least consider it. I'll put a link to her website because her website's amazing. She's actually done a video course to supplement this book. So if you have this book, you don't even have to have the book to, to follow the course, but she has a lot of free material. I was not fortunate enough to get a copy of either of her Spirit Keeper decks. Um, it's the way the cookie crumbles, but she is very generous in far as putting the card images up there. You can actually download a PDF of, um, the white book that was with the first deck. Um, and she actually, I think, has available the, the chapter that it was changed a little bit. You can download that as well in the, in the new one. Um, the images, she lets you have the images of, um, the major arcana from the first deck um and all the images of the cards are available on on the site anyway so you can look at and so that's what i've been doing i didn't get the physical copy but as you know <laughs> i you know i don't i'm leaning towards there's some if i miss out i miss out but to have um you know a electronic version of whether it's a download or just able to access access a site that has images and she was generous enough to put the PDF of the book out. Um, she's just an amazing person. I and so like her knowledge is like unbelievable. And the fact that she shares it like that is so wonderful. Um, because I know she has no plans to make any more copies of the deck and it's limited. Those two versions are it. You either got them or you didn't, and I didn't. But like I said, she's very generous in sharing the images and um, and the book alone. And there are, um, yeah, there's several. I have another book that I just have the book and I don't have the cards. So um, I, can't, I believe in that anyways. I don't think you always need the cards. The cards are nice. Um, some cards in decks, I feel they're more for study and not so much even I don't if I'm studying it um, either for uh, theological philosophical or any sort of higher 
um, education, I would say for myself, for spiritual growth. I don't always need a physical to have a physical card. I'm, I'm fine with that. The images are more important. And um, she has graciously um, let that, you know, if you go on her site, you can find a, it's just a wealth of information on her site. Um, the book itself is just, I just, if anyone hasn't heard of it, I mean, um, it's definitely something you should look into getting. Uh, I mean, from the beginning, t tarot analyst. Analytics, a, a holistic approach. Um, I just, I can't, I can't like say enough about this book. Um, probably give you an idea of the best. Um, obeying your fears and offering theories, fear of the unknown. Um, I just like that she put that in there too because Tarot has had a mixed negative. Um, beliefs about tarot have been mixed and some people may not have an accurate view and I really do believe that if you're trying to do personal development tarot is like a picture book to help you um but she goes down to everything the anatomy of the right away personal journal she encourages to, jur to journal um beginning on rote learning if you actually are a beginner and then um she goes into like it just gets it gets it gets it gets it gets, it gets I'll spit it out in a minute. Um, she gets really deep into the symbolism of the cards. She incorporates um, all kinds of tarot spreads. I mean, the book is huge. Um, analytic process of resilience reading that's great. Positive affirmation and tarot, depth diagnostic diagnostic. Um, she has a, a nice um, chapter on but the professional practice of ta um, tarot as well which I thought was very good um, she has like numerology you're calculating your path number. I mean anything that you can think of astrological um, she goes into the Marseille um, it's just it's like a huge um encyclopedia of tarot but it's written in such a way that um she does set you up that you can learn if you're learning to look at the tarot and it's it's as a basic um it's here but if you want to delve deeper um this book has everything and um i was very impressed when i got this book i wish that probably i had this years ago <laughs> but it's no less um, I'm no, no worse off now that I have it, um, but I can't even, like, say enough. It's just so detailed. Everything, um, like I said, and she goes into, um, symbols, astrological symbols and the cards. Um, she's just so detailed, so, um, it's the tree, she has the, um, The Tree of Life from the Kabbalah. Um, just, I mean, I, I can't go into that. There's just so much information in here. So I would say as a, a kind of um, master book, if you're looking for one, that covers from learning it from um, kind of like soup to nuts if, and to look at it as a, um, to learn the tarot in a way that's going to assist you in your personal growth, I would recommend this book. Um, and that's why it's like on my, the, my first one, because I think a lot of people will get the benefit of it. She puts it in such a way that I find you'll be able to conquer, um, the higher aspects of, of, of tarot, um, and to be able to utilize that to assist you in your own personal growth and, um, and, tar and, your, and your development. Um and using tarot for that. Um, so yes, her book is number one um, for me. I absolutely love this book. Um, my second book, you're gonna see, um, again, um, a theme <laughs> as far as now my other books, I think, except for 
probably the last one. No, the fourth and fifth one, I would say, aren't so much. Um, yeah, they're not about Bach in general. Um, but again, that is a passion for mine, for of the Philosopher's Stone, the, the Rosetta Stone, um, any of that. Egyptian, I've already said, uh, as far as um, I love to research and um, that it, so that just kind of sums up with the Thoth deck. Death. Oh, the Thoth deck. <laughs> Death. Um, so one of my favorite books, one of my favorite books also goes with one of my favorite decks, and I'm going to be working with this deck coming up in December, and that's the Guild Tarot. I know that's not for everyone. I this is um, I don't have a hard copy of um, the book. I have the deck. But the actual book that goes along with the tarot you can get separately and that I have on um, my Kindle. So what I love about the Guild Tarot is um, it takes a lot of the, I think it takes the Thoth Tarot and puts it in a way that if you're not familiar with it or you're overwhelmed by it, I think it puts it in a way that people can access it and it's down to the imagery of the cards as well. I don't think, I, I think everyone pretty much knows what this deck looks like so I don't have my copy right here with me. Um, but just to read from um, the introduction and the book is by um, obviously Elizabeth Josephine Gill and in the, her introduction she says, I view the tower as an awakener in the sense that it touches and develops something dormant or hidden within. It acts like this because the archetypical images of the tarot contained, um, communicate through and beyond the levels of the utilitarian, util util I'll get it in a minute, <laughs> utilitarian consciousness, and can thus act as a bridge between the conscious and the inner self, between limitation and freedom. Most cultures and religions have known this power of creative image and have sometimes used it or they have reacted violently against it, as people do react to a threat to the status quo. What is desired and feared is the transcendence of the ordinary and the discovery of a greater, truer self and world. It is within such a framework of belief and experience that the Guild Tarot deck and book have been prepared as a traditional book of wisdom, a way toward inner veracity and communication. Originally a personal research in this direction, it was painted with the hope that insofar as I was able to touch its message myself, its living dynamic would emerge through the work. Unlike religious systems, which so often through misuse grind out a dreary inheritance of dogma, platitudes, and narrow morality, the tarot has failed, so far as I know, to distort, repress, or condition people into the slavish behavior of those battered by the moralistic and punitive regulations which enslave instead of freeing human potential. As far as I'm aware, no one has ever been tortured, massacred, <laughs> forcibly converted, or martyred in its name. Pretty, pretty, yeah, just, yeah, that's a punch. <laughs> and it sums up a lot about what I feel about organized religions um, are not supportive. They're meant to keep you downgraded to a point where you are, con are, are controlled. Um, that's my opinion. I'm just putting it out there. That's where my path has led me. Um, so needless to say, this book, um, and with the deck, it, if you don't want the deck, get the book because, um, there is so much information in here. And, um, I find eye opening. Um, so yeah, that's just my opinion. I'm not going to go on and on about it because I really can't you know, in any sense of the word, put this, um, you know, but it's got like, here's an example, the tree of life, it's, um, and, and that deck is based on the tree of life, which I love, because, yeah, big on the Kabbalah, um, so yeah, um, it's a great book, like I said, um, this one I have on my Kindle, I didn't get the hard copy, because I like the, to be able to take this around with me. So um, that is my second deck, my, my second book that is connected to a deck, I should say, an actual deck. Um, and my next, it's kind of two, 
and I'm putting them as my as my number three but it's really two two books this I have on I have both of these decks I have as an app and so I don't have they're on my Kindle which I'm using to <laughs> film so it's not like I can show you but I will put links to both of these decks uh, and these are very again very soft very um, Golden Dawn um, yeah there that that's the a study that is this tarot deck is really the two tarot decks are uh, very heavily into the soft images and understanding Crowley and his work and um, the Golden Dawn and and getting a hand on that if that's where you're if you're interested in that um, I would say if you're just interested in the thought deck, deck alone both of these books would probably um, assist you also in getting the deeper meanings and understanding a lot behind it um, and this is the Rosetta Tarot and it's by M.M. Malini and the second tarot that um, they did the Tabula Mundi Tarot both of the books that go along with these decks are amazing I don't personally have the copies of these decks this is again an area where I feel I don't need to have the physical copy I actually prefer them on the app and you are able to, to obtain both of these decks on the app and um, I think they're amazing I love the card images um, and I love these books and again to me it's like a study it's like um, you know it's, it's getting in deep with higher um, higher thought processes in, in regards to magic um, spirituality and um, manifestation um, and also a study of the archetypes that John also talks about as well is, is in there in the Kabbalah and they're just I just can't re recommend them enough and again I don't think I can speak um, in such a way that I'm going to convey such <laughs> high complicated um, that's not one of my strong points is to break down things sim things in simple terms I think for people to understand what I mean by it so you either know that you're interested in that or you're, you know you're not and if you are then I would recommend um, the, both of these decks and the books that come with them again I don't have the physical copies but I do have both apps and I am enjoying those tremendously um, and again I will put links to uh, little information about both the decks and, um, and the author and illustrator of those um, my fourth um, deck is again one that I don't have the physical copy but it's on my Kindle hopefully I can find it it's really And this is um, let's see, Kim Huggins. Um, I did have her Tarot Illuminati is high is up there. I just didn't um, say that because that was one of Natalia's books. Actually, like three of hers were mine, and I think um, she expressed. Uh, I look at it like if you're gonna say the five masters I I have more than that but I wanted to bring forth um, some books that maybe people aren't familiar with or if they are that's fine too um, but um, I just felt like the ones that she mentioned three of them um, I also um, worked I work with so this one is I, and I think again this one <laughs> I didn't have this, I didn't read this when I was going through my learning process, but I would absolutely recommend um, Kim Huggins' work in general is just amazing. And this one is her, um, sorry, I was trying to get to the um, first page of that, but for some reason that was not 
working on my Kindle. Um, Tarot 101 um, by Kim Huggins, and it's Mastering the Art of Reading the Cards. And again, if you, I recommend that you look into any of her books. She does an amazing job um, as far as breaking it down. And this especially, if you want to learn tarot, this is a great way to learn tarot. Um, she goes into the major arcana and the masculine archetypes. She breaks it down. Carl Jung and the fourfold divine masculine, um, other masculine archetypes. Um, she goes into Salamic re retellings, medi medieval virgin, vir virgin. <laughs> oh Lord, I'm just going on with this. I'm not going to stop it. So you have to put up with anything I say is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> medieval virtues in the tarot. Um, Alchem alchemical roses, the great rite of alchemy spread. She does, um, yeah. See, this is, book is loaded with all kinds of um, information. The, she even goes into the major arcana of the dark side. Learn, um, love, 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 love. Negative to positive. Becoming a proactive tarot reader. Um, yeah, this, this is just an amazing, amazing, amazing astrological attributes of the court cards. Um, she gives you a little homework if you want to do homework. Um, I just, um, also she goes into dealing with difficult questions if you're going to read with someone. Laws of tarot, your tarot ethics. Um, and she goes into the uh, kind of ma magic, the will and the wands of fire. Um, Chatting isn't um, cheating. Interactive readings. Um, she goes into atmosphere, but the, the book is just full, um, and I recommend it if you're starting out. Even if you know tarot, you want to go a little bit deeper. That book is like amazing. Um, so I recommend I recommend all of her books. Um, they're absolutely amazing. But I just you know if you're going to start out, I thought that was a good one, um, and you really will if you use that book you have every opportunity to master the other readings um so that's a very good resource as well um and and the way she breaks it down and, and she just has a way of making the information flow and um i'm able to access that and understand it um easily it's not very complicated um she has uh, she has a gift for breaking down um the information and, and presenting it in such a way that I feel it's easy to follow. Um, so yes, that's that book. My final book, uh, my number five, is the Mother Peace Tarot book. Now I got this book in, and it's by Vicki Noble. I don't have, again, I don't have this deck. This book is like totally, it's like ancient. Um, it was, at one time it was a library edition that um, was put in to be sold, and one of the cover things is actually ripped off of it, but it has seen better days. Um, now, I am always, I'm very interested in, um, the, the study of the goddess, and the way that connects to the feminine, and the divine feminine, and how, um, the patriarchal system that you know, developed in most religions, um, the Christian one especially, um, just getting rid of the goddess altogether. And um, to me, I think as being a woman, and I've always been fascinated with the, the feminine in regards to um, myth and how it was, and pagan beliefs, and the power that women had in previous um, societies, um, ancient societies, and how that was lost to me is is fascinating. But also, I I also like to incorporate that strong feminine in my life because I can relate to it. And I'm not saying that I do enjoy books and also um, decks that have a combination of masculine and feminine. But I also like decks that basically just feel, um, that I can feel that connection to just the feminine. Mother Peace, um, it's, I mean, 
by his title, it's a way to the goddess through myth, art, and tarot, which is right up my, <laughs> right up my house. I really do enjoy this book. Um, let's see, I have some page, I don't know what was there, but at least it started on page, page one, but something was there that ripped it off. So yeah, like I said, this was, I probably got this like in a secondhand bookshop or something, or I don't know. Um, but I'm absolutely, um, I love the book. I'm not so much caught up in the card imagery that I felt like I had to get the cards to go with it. I feel like the, um, the book itself is fine. Um, I love, I just love her take on, um, this deck that she's created and her, you can get the passion that, and her, um, and where her, her fire is, like her message of what she tries to get out with her cards. Um, and it, it is also her, her she also um, wants to restore that connection to the goddess that was, you know, um, present in the matriarchal um, civilization. And um, so she's taken that concept with the, with the tarot and, and she's presenting it in the, from the feminine perspective. And I really like that. Um, so, um, just even a little thing right here. You see, represented by the number zero, the pool in tarot has been a symbol of the void, the pre-creation state containing all possibilities but not yet manifesting any particular things. In many creation myths, this state is called chaos and considered to be female. The goddess of all things rose naked from chaos and found nowhere to place her foot. Separating the sea from the sky, she brooded over the waters until she gave birth to her life herself. Consciousness hovering over the face of the waters is a biblical idea as well, describing the Holy Spirit and its original feminine form, the breath of life. In the words borrowed from Jungian analyst Marie Louise von Franz, the pool is a glyph of psychic wholeness. Before the rise of ego consciousness or any kind of dividing consciousness, hence the traditional appearance of the fool in tarot decks as a happy-go-lucky mortal about to step off a cliff into the abyss. There is the fool of el in an element of the divine trickster. I think of Roadrunner cartoons I saw as a child. No matter how wily the coyote is, the Roadrunner could always out-trick him. Because Roadrunner was really the fool who had the ability to walk off cliffs into space and not be killed. The fool doesn't know what she is doing in the sense of logical thought, but moves from an impulse that arises out of the infinite possibilities alive in the embryonic state represented by zero. Containing all possibilities, the fool represents the phenomenon of synchronicity or coincidences between happenings. The fool is the part of us that unconsciously connects to the greater universal whole, so things are constantly just happening. Um, so, yeah, this is why I love this, this book. And she does it from a feminine perspective, um, and she has stories that she weaves in of her, I like the, the, the way she referenced the cartoon. I think that can make, make it, um, easy to understand, but she provides images in the book of the cards, um, and like I said, and there on the book. So I haven't really felt there's some kind of ones here of the magician, um, the high priestess. Um, I'm not saying that I might not still get these cards, but I haven't found the need to. I really love this one, the chariot. Um, so yeah, um, I, I still may, but this is a, again an, um, an example of, I've had this book and I've been you know, I've been reading this book over the years, and I don't have the cards, but I, I do consider this a master. In the way, if you are uh, looking for that connection to goddess, um, in a way to connect to it through myth, art, and the tarot, <laughs> as she does, I really think she's done a, a magnificent job of that. And I do recommend this book tremendously. Even if you don't like find any kind of resonant, like if you don't resonate with the actual cards, they're round. The artwork may not be for everybody. The book itself and what it has to say, I, I think it's worth looking at. 
um, if you get the book. Um, so yeah, that's my five. I'm going to end it here and I'm going to put links in so that any of the decks uh, and the books that go with decks, um, you can see them. Uh, like I said, I, I do, these are my five top ones. I did have three also from Natalia's, um, video, her, her initial video, uh, were on my list as well, but I thought I would just put out something that, um, was, you know, beyond those ones as well, because I, I like, even with tarot, I have a hard time limiting anything to five, seven, ten <laughs> books. Um, I think Natalia mentioned that, she, you know, herself in books, I, I can't get enough of them. And, um, yeah, you know, my dream library would be like in those big old Victorian halls, houses where the library like goes just around and around the walls of books and you need ladders to get to the top of them. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's how I feel about books in general. Um, but this is actually an example of, I don't always feel like I need to have the decks and physical copies, and that's why on my other, um, one of my other videos, I said, you know, what do you think of apps, and do you think they'll replace decks? Um, I don't look at it as a replacement. I, there are some decks that I actually do enjoy having a physical copy of them in my hand, but there are a lot more where I would just, I don't mind, it's, it's either I'm attracted to the images, and they're pretty, um, and they make me feel good and happy, and there's nothing wrong with that, or they're very intense decks with, um, you know, like hermetic symbols, the Kabbalah, and they're, I consider those more study decks. And again, I don't feel like I need to have a physical copy of the cards. If I have the book or access to the book um, and the theology behind it, I'm good, I'm golden. Um, so that's just me. Um, <laughs> thank you for your time and attention and my beginning fumbling around with pronunciation at times and stumbling over what I'm saying. I hope it was clear enough, but again, I'll put the link and you can make your, your own, you know, this, this may not, some of these books may not um, be, you know, your thing, that's fine too, but if you are leaning towards researching or finding out more about Voss and any of the um, other decks and, and books that I talked about, I will put the links. Thank you again for your um, attention. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't. And um, blessings. Bye.